Are we live? I think so. Looks like we may be. Coming through on the YouTubes. Great. Let's check the Facebooks. Come through there as well. The Twitters. Let's see what we're doing here. Looking good there as well. Fantastic. Welcome to the Creative Control Room podcast pre-show. This is the part of the show where we go around and make sure all systems are go. That means checking um, all of our gear, audio, lighting, cameras, making sure everything is up and running and operational. Um, looking like right now, everything seems to look good. No drop frames. We're doing a lot. We're, we're live here. We're recording there, recording our audio there. Uh, check our camera angles here, camera one, camera two, camera three. Oh, there goes Twitch. Awesome. Here we go. Fantastic. Um, we're up and running there. Lighting is all on. Audio coming through. Looking good, it appears. Very good. Okay, let's see. Um... Today's going to get a little crazy, a little wild, possibly. Talk about why. Just looking at some OBS stats here, and everything looks really good. Really, really good. I like that. So we're going to close that there. Okay. Uh, today is what? Sunday, March 6th. And... Um, did we go? Did we do everything? Everything checks out. Set up there looks good. There, audio, lighting, cameras. Things are different today, and we'll talk about it. So that's why I'm uh I'm taking my time a little bit here, but uh, I think uh, I think we're all set and good to go. This is episode 102, so let's go ahead and um. Why on face? Let me see. Everything come. Everything looks like it's coming through good. Okay, cool. Let's try this. Here we go. Um, well, let me check one thing here. Boom, boom, boom. Looks good there. All right. Let's get this thing going, shall we? This is the Creative Control Room Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers, where my goal is to help you make to the max. Hello and welcome to episode... Number 102 of the Creative Control Room Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Ryan Hafey. I am your operator. In this episode, uh, we're going to be previewing my new Razer Blade 17 laptop, which you see here. We're going to be talking about this a little bit uh, and kind of getting into the pros and cons of it. I uh, just got this thing maybe a little bit over a week ago, week ago or so. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. If I look tired today, it's because, well, I am. Uh, we had a little bit of a late night last night. Um, my uh, my my wife and my sister-in-law got tickets to go see Silk Sonic at Park GM Park MGM here in in Las Vegas. And while they were doing that, uh, my brother-in-law and I um, just kind of hung out at the casino. I uh, did something that I haven't done in a long time, which was gamble. Uh, but we. Uh, played some slots, taught my brother-in-law how to play some three-card poker, which I hadn't played three-card poker in years, so that was fun. Uh, had a few drinks, uh, but it ended up being a late night. I'm still in what I wore to bed, and uh, I'm just going to rock it, just put a hat on, you know, at least my, make myself look a little bit presentable. But I'm here, and um, got some interesting stuff to talk about today. But if you are new here to the podcast, uh, this is the Creative Control Room podcast. This is my Creative Control Room. This is where uh, I, I do all things photography, video production, video editing, um, podcasting, live streaming, occasional FPV drone talk as well. And this is where I talk about all the things that I happen to be working on and kind of uh, share the knowledge that I have in this space with you. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening and follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, where I'll be posting more content and um, answering any questions that you have. So um, I want to jump right in then to the main topic here because we have a lot to go over. So yes, this is right here, the Razer Blade 17, I think Razer Blade 17 Advanced um, 
I think is like the full name, but it's the the newest Razer Blade 17 um, by Razer. It is a a beast of a machine, and we're going to talk about it. This is not sponsored in any way by Razer. I bought this laptop recently with my own money, um, and there are reasons why I bought it, which we're going to get into now, actually. So why did I buy this particular machine? Well, um, up until now, I mean, everything that I do within this space is done on my PC. Uh, I do have a work laptop um, which again is for work one, but also it's a 2018 Mac. I don't like using Macs when it comes to OBS and, um, podcasting and things like that, just because it makes it, especially on the audio side, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, and Macs don't have a lot of ports on their computers. So you often got to buy a lot of dongles and things like that. I just find that it's a much easier process, um, and a much better experience doing it on a, um, on a PC than on a Mac. So I wanted something powerful, um, something that I could take with me ed- and something that could handle editing footage and live streaming and podcasting and things like that uh, just as well as as my, my home desktop PC here. Um, so you know, that, that was kind of the main reason. Um, powerful laptop that can handle editing, powerful laptop that can you know handle podcasting. Obviously a little bit of gaming as well. I've been doing a little bit more gaming mostly on the oculus but you know my kids are big gamers uh and occasionally they like me to to jump on and play with them and uh something that can handle all that would be great so um but back to the part about the podcasting so another reason is um for for a podcast that i'm working on there's potential for some travel podcasts in the future and um this particular podcast, we have a studio that has a desktop PC, um, but obviously, you know, we want to be set up to um, take that on the road, and it's going to be, it's hard enough to travel with a lot of gear anyway, so, uh, you know, you obviously don't want to travel with an entire, and, and the, the PC that he has is like, it's not like a traditional PC tower, it's shaped like a, like a, just like a cube, Um and it's not something you would want to travel with. <clears throat> Wouldn't be very practical. So a laptop is definitely necessary. Um, and, you know, I would use it not just for his, but also for any travel needs that I would have as well. But to kind of prepare for that, um, to prepare for potential travel, I st- had to start thinking about, okay, how does, you know, if, if, I, if I were to step back and try to walk you through how everything is connected in this studio to make this whole operation work, I could do it, but it would probably be a little disjointed, a little unorganized. So I forced myself to sit down and think about, okay, um, how does all this fit together? Maybe I should map this out so that I can have a visual of that, but also when it comes time to start, you know, collecting, getting the gear ready to travel with, making sure that I don't miss anything along the way. So I created what I guess would be best described as a a schematic. Um, Let me see if this is working here. Hang on, are we good? Okay, I think we're good here. Hopefully this this pops up. So this this is a little schematic that I made um, that just kind of shows how, and this is for a four person podcast studio, uh, or at least a four camera and up to four person podcast studio. So I know this probably looks a little bit confusing, but I'll break it down here. So um, in the red here, you have your power supply. So this is just basically, I mean, I don't need three different power supplies, but it's just essentially to show you which devices will require a power source of some kind. So obviously all four of your cameras, the, the blue here, as you can see in this little, uh, guide down below, um, those are your cameras. Hang on. Let me check one thing because I have to switch screens here. Okay, cool. looks like we're working. Cool. Cool. So blue are my cameras here. Um, these M1, M2, M3, M4, those are the microphones. Each person is going to have a headphone. So those, um, are in green over here. You have your peripherals in black, uh, the PC, or in this case, laptop, you know, Adam, Adam, uh, right here is the broadcast switcher audio interface. In my case, the Rodecaster pro the stream deck, which is, um, my little device that, uh, um, this little guy here, if you can see that, that you know, has my different little pop-ups on the screen, little buttons that I can press to do some, uh, some handy things. And then, um, 
a monitor in the event that I want to have a, a second external monitor, which in this case I don't, but I should, uh, would have helped in this case. But, um, and obviously you've got your internet connection, which goes directly into the PC. And this, all these lines here just essentially show you what connects to what and how. So all the cameras are going to connect to the ADEM broadcast switcher, which will then connect to the PC via a data cable of some kind. All of your microphones and headphones are going to be connected to the audio interface. Um, I also have a headphone as the producer here, which is this H5 down here. Um, and then that audio interface gets connected to the PC. Stream Deck uh, goes directly to the PC. It does not require any external power. Um, the monitor obviously is going to require power and it's going to be connected to the PC as well. And this, uh, like I said, it just it, this will just kind of allow me to make sure that I that everything is accounted for when we travel. I need to make sure I have all the connectors and uh, just all the different elements to make everything work. So that's um, that's what that's about. And I was kind of proud of that, so I wanted to show that off a little bit. Uh, let's see, Real Chicago, how are you enjoying the new laptop? Well, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, I've got lots to say about it. So um, let's see, where was I going with this? So... And um, so that's the schematic and should let you know now, um, by the way, that this podcast today is being produced live with this new laptop, this Razer laptop. I actually, I woke up this morning and I was going to um, just host the podcast regularly using the PC, my normal PC, and then just connecting this laptop via the HDMI port into the ATEM mini so that I could essentially use this as an additional camera angle but I figured no that's not that's not gonna really show like its true potential we need to actually get it set up and uh, use it today as my main kind of production driver as I guess if you want to call it so um, in order to do that <clears throat> I had to make sure that I installed all the software so in software for the stream deck here my audio interface, the Rodecaster, the ATEM Mini. Uh, shoot, what else was there? There was uh, Rodecaster, Stream Deck. Yeah, that was, that was about it. Um, those three things. But I also had to back up files from the Rodecaster and the, um, what else was there? The, the Stream Deck, I had to back that stuff up. OBS, I had to back up. That's something we should talk about in an episode too. OBS... A quick sidebar here. OBS does not make it very easy to back up your profile. Let's say if you want to do what I'm doing here, you let's say if you typically produce on one machine and then you want to go to another machine and do the same thing, OBS, there's like no syncing or no way to just easily go into the file menu and, and export all of your settings. You have to go in and uh, I think the, uh, let's see here. Let's, let's go back to the monitor just for a moment. I know there's, there's a big jumbled mess here right now. But if you go into File, Show Settings folder, you essentially have to back all of this up. And then um, you can replace. So if you were to download OBS on a new machine, you could then down back those files up, open OBS on a new machine, replace the files that are already in that folder with those backed up files, and then you might have to reconnect some of the files that, um, you know, if you have any animations and things like that, you might have to reconnect those. But that's what you have to do. It's a few extra steps. I wish they would make it a little bit more seamless. I digress. Anyway, um, so yeah, all those things had to be backed up and, and uh, set up here. I had to unplug, obviously, some of those peripherals like the, the Rodecaster, the ATEM, the Stream Deck, get them plugged into the laptop here. And, um, but, but ultimately I'm actually really surprised how, how it, I, I was able to accomplish it with really no heck hiccups or headaches. And here we are. Um, so it went together really quickly, really well. And I'm, I'm excited with how it turned out. Um, let me see here. The joys of loading software. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's talk about then. Some of the specs of this laptop, and I'll go over to this screen here. Pull this up. All right, cool. So this is the 
page for uh, the laptop. This is the, the model that I purchased. And this is essentially, so they have razor blade 14, 15, and 17. This just refers to the size. I got the 17 and I went for the most spec'd out version I could find. This was actually a goal of mine for this year was to buy myself a laptop by the end of the year, obviously accomplished that a little bit early. Um, but I, I wanted to go all out because I wanted this machine to last me a while and uh, I wanted a powerful machine, something that I haven't, you know, I've never really had like a super, super powerful laptop. So this was definitely a splurge for me, but this is going to come in really handy. Anyway, specs include 1.8 gigahertz, 14 core Intel i9 processor, uh, Windows 11. Um, the display is a 17.3 inch 4K, 144 hertz IPS display. It's a very nice uh, display, looks great. I actually have it set on 60 hertz right now just for battery savings, and I'm not gaming at the moment, so might as well. Uh, it's got a NVIDIA uh, GeForce RTX 3080 Ti graphics card, which is actually the same cra graphics card I have in my PC. Uh, I've got a one terabyte SSD, uh, which is upgradable to four terabytes if I really wanted it to. Uh, may have to do that in the future, we'll see. Uh, and it's got 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Uh, my PC has 128 gigs of RAM, but it's DDR4, and I've found that this, this works really well. Um, also, there's a lot of ports. That was kind of one of the big things for me. Um, as you can kind of see, let's go back to here. You can kind of see <clears throat> where everything is plugged in here. No dongles or anything like that. Uh, but that was one of the big sell selling points for me. So uh, let's see. It's a great laptop. Considered it for editing in Premiere Pro because of its ability to handle the workload. Definitely. Um, I've I've just I haven't played with it a ton in Premiere, but the little that I have done, it's worked flawlessly. So uh, I've, I'm really liking it so far. But let's go over some of the, some of the pros and cons of this particular machine. Why I chose it and whether or not it would be useful for you as a creative or as a podcaster what have you. So um, first of all, the pros, let's start on a positive note. Um, it's very fast. It's very powerful. It uh, ran some benchmark tests, definitely rivals my PC setup, might even outperform it in some areas. Uh, I haven't done a direct comparison, but it's, it's pretty incredible um, the kind of power that I can get out of this thing. Um, so very fast, very powerful, very capable. And I believe I've watched a video too that compared it to some of the new M1 Max. Um, and it, it, it actually wins, I think, in almost, in, in most of the categories. I, don't quote me on that, but there, I think, might've been second in a few areas, but for the most part, it outperformed um, uh, some of the, the new M1 Max, which is crazy. Um, got a lot, a lot of customizable RGB features. If that's your thing, you can, you know, I, I set my, you, you can do actually a lot of it. I, I haven't played with it a ton, but you can select certain keys on your keyboard to light up and, and pulse or change color and things like that. So if RGB is, is your thing, there you go. You can do that. Uh, as I mentioned already, there's tons of ports on this thing. So just on this side here, we've got two USB ports, uh, a USB-C, uh, an Ethernet port, and then power. Over here, we've got, let's see, we'll bring it down here. Over here, we've got uh, an SD card slot, which was huge for me. Uh, we've got an HDMI out, another USB, and a USB-C. So if ports are your things and dongles, and you hate dongles, there you go. Um, this this might be for you. Um, audio on this thing is just okay, I guess. You know, laptop speakers. I don't know what you really expect out of a laptop. Out of laptop speakers, they're fine. Haven't done a ton of uh, audio tests from the speakers directly, but yeah, there you go. Um, the display is a 144 hertz 4K display, as we mentioned previously. That, that would be on the pros list. It's bright. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, no, I'm probably not gonna be able to show this, but I mean, this thing can get pretty bright if I wanted it to. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very nice. It's very bright. It's very colorful. I haven't calibrated it yet. I do need to calibrate it, but it's a great display. 
Uh, let's see. I have the 14 inch. Real Chicago says I have the 14 inch MacBook, and the Razer does take it. Uh, does take it in a few areas for sure. For sure. Uh, it definitely outperforms my um, 2018 MacBook. Also, it has another pro for me is that it has silent modes and boost options um, built in. Uh, you know, if you're someone who maybe doesn't know all the technicals of um, kind of, uh, you know, boosting PCs and, and pushing the limits of them, there are some built in features that you can take advantage of. Um, but also, in, and it has a whisper mode, which I assume kind of reels in the power a little bit uh, and the performance because um, this thing can get loud. The fans, like if you're gaming, the fans can get a little bit loud when everything's kind of up and running it at full capacity. But right now, I just for the sake of the podcast and not ruining the audio, I've set it up to, um, to run on whisper mode or whatever it's called, silent mode. And as you can hear, I mean, it's not, it's not making any noise, so it's great. So for me, those are the big pros. Now, there are some cons, uh, namely three currently. Again, this is based on a week, week and a half worth of, of use at this point. But these are the three cons uh, in my book. Number one, the, the power port here. There's, this is a proprietary power port for Razer. To my knowledge, I don't think that you can charge um, using any of the other USB-C or any of the other ports on the side. From my understanding, this is the only option that you have if you want to to uh, power the laptop. And there is a big, I mean, you have like a, a, a pretty sizable um, power brick or whatever you would call this. Uh, so it takes up a lot of room. The cable's kind of long and thick and heavy. So you do need some space for this and you do need to expect that you're going to you know, only be able to use this, this power cable. Um, next, the battery life. Battery life sucks on this thing. If I'm being completely honest, if you were, I mean, if you were sitting around just doing kind of general light work, maybe some text editing and things like that, you could probably get about four hours off the battery. If you, uh, are doing any heavy editing, then, uh, you're going to be, um, probably limited to maybe two hours or so. I mean, I don't expect necessarily a machine like this that's intended for high performance and gaming and things like that to have a long lasting battery. I, my assumption, um, USB-C charging. Yeah. You <laughs> real Chicago says, uh, he has Mac safe and USB-C charging on his MacBook. They do win in that respect. I will give them that. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, just battery life is not going to be fantastic on this. And you just kind of have to understand that going into it again for, for what I wanted to use it for. Um, that's not going to be an issue for me. If I'm, if I'm taking this thing on the road, I'm going to be p- producing longer form podcasts. There's no way I'd do it without plugging it in in the first place. And even on a laptop that wasn't, um, even on a, a laptop that had a good lap- battery life, I typically wouldn't edit, um, you know, videos and things like that without plugging it in just because I'd be worried about running out of juice anyway. So battery life, not great. Just keep that in mind going into it. And the last thing is this thing's heavy. I, I weighed it. I think it's a little over six pounds. Like it's not a, it's not a light machine that's going to add uh, a good amount of weight to my backpack as I'm walking through airports and things like that. Um, so again, it's not small, it's not compact, it is heavy. Again, we'll come back here. Just, you know, my hand for scale you can kind of, let's see if I have anything better. Here's a Rubik's cube. Like it's, it's not a small machine. Um, but again, they do have the, the blade 15 and the blade 14 options. If you don't want this giant screen. And actually I was going to get the 15, but because I'm impatient, um, I pre-ordered the 15, which wasn't supposed to come out till later this month or wasn't going to be shipped till later this month. And then I got an alert from Razer that the 17 that I was kind of looking at, but decided to go with the 15. Like they said, they said the 17 was back in stock. So I'm like, ah, all right, I'll just, I'll just cancel that order. Go with the 17, call it a day, be done with it. So just to kind of recap those pros, very fast, very, very powerful, customizable RGB. If that's your thing, lots of ports to work with. 
Um, again, that's going to be a big one, I think, for a lot of people. 144 hertz 4K display. If you're a gamer, you're looking for a gaming laptop that's got an amazing display, um, this is one for you. Silent modes and uh, other uh, boost options um, to kind of uh, uh, boost performance on this as well. Cons being proprietary power port, battery life is terrible, and it's big and it's heavy. So there you go. That's uh, that's kind of my initial breakdown. I'm going to try to use this some more often, and maybe in a couple months I'll come back and do more of a uh, more in-depth um, breakdown of this thing, kind of what my reactions are uh, at this point. Zephyrus G14 or Blade 14 for gaming? I don't know, uh, Akuma. Uh, someone asked if the Zephyrus G14 or Blade 14 would be better for gaming. I mean, I, I have I don't have experience with the Zephyrus, um, and uh, but but again, my experience so far with the Blade is great, uh, and they have a lot of different options in each of those sizes of the Blade laptops, whether it be the 14, 15, or 17. So, um, depending on what your budget is, I mean, they're not cheap. That's probably another con is, you know, this, this thing retailed at 4,300. So they're not cheap laptops. Um, but they feel sturdy and they're good quality. So if you have the budget for it, you know, check out the different options they have, um, for the blades and, uh, see where you can go with that. But anyway, uh, I think that about covers everything that I wanted to go over today. And uh, I'm very happy that this was a success and I didn't have a bunch of crazy issues. I mean, I guess I didn't really do anything that was crazy and off the wall. But anyway, hey, if you're still here with me and if you enjoyed anything that I talked about in this episode today, it would be great if you could hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. Also, follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey. Uh, that's H-A-F-E-Y on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Feel free to swing by, say hello, ask a question. Uh, I enjoy interacting with viewers and uh, people after the show. So once again, thanks for being here. Keep on creating, making, and doing. We will see you in the next one. <coughs> Bye-bye.